thank you so much. Uh, this is the second meeting uh, last time we were here in December. But um, uh, I think the situation has not changed much. I'm a Pakistani journalist and author. My two books uh, uh, have been published. One is Frontline Pakistan, The Struggle with Militant Islam, which has also been published in Arabic. And the second one is The Scorpion's Tale, The Relentless Rise of Extremism and it, how, how it threatens the world. Well, my second, the title of my second book is quite uh, significant. It means scorpions. You all know scorp what scorpions, it, uh, scorpions is. And uh, there is basically when you cut its tail, it regenerates. So it's the, basically when we are talking about fighting extremism, we should understand that um, uh, we can not defeat it militarily. I'm coming for a region which has been the center of uh, extremism for quite some time. It's Afghanistan and Pakistan. And one can say that it is, uh, this region is probably has the, uh, has the highest number of uh, terrorist attacks over the last few years. One thing is very clear when, uh, when I'm talking about a scorpion tail, the general perception is that uh, we can kill people, but uh, it regenerates. In case of uh, in Afghanistan, we have seen that when American forces went into Afghanistan, the major purpose was, uh, was uh, said to be to eliminate Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, who were, uh, who were basically responsible for the terrorist attack, 9-11 terrorist attack. But what we saw, yes, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda was almost eliminated from that region. Osama bin Laden was killed. But one should ask this question, whether it's the end of, um, of extremism. No. What we witness today is more extremist form of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, militancy has emerged and is known as SIS. So when we are talking, and I have heard a lot of his speeches here, and what I, um, my observation is that major thrust has been, um, sorry to say that, on some of the superficial things. We have not been able to discuss the real issues behind extremism. One should analyze that why actually we keep seeing more extremists form in those areas which are conflict ridden. For example, ISIS, there was no existence of ISIS, not even mention of that uh, or extremism of in that form, of any form, in those regions which has become the hub of ISIS activities. And my reference is Iraq, Syria, and other Middle Eastern countries. We have not heard. Even Al-Qaeda maybe have some kind of presence there, but it was not like a force. So extremism remain, exists in all countries. It's not like actually we have exceptional. Existence, uh, extremism, some form, exists in a dormant form, but First, we, uh, we have to examine what leads it to flourish. And I think uh, I, I'll, I'll give you five, actually, factors which are very important when we are talking about the sources. We, are just, we have uh, been talking about uh, the, uh, that um, ideology has to be fought. But one has to examine what are the conditions in which it, it has emerged. My four, five point is number one, the conflict, the strife or civil war in, in a particular country. The second thing is external factors, which little, little has been mentioned uh, in our discussion and debate uh, since yesterday. Then the third one is, uh, is the denial of rights of people or rights of a nation. And, and more so, I think um, uh, this is what is, uh, uh, gives it is basically a, a deliberate move by certain countries to support extremism as a form of their policy. There are five factors, and if we don't actually, if we really want to fight extremism, we have to address those five sources of extremism. Without that, I think we can, uh, we, uh, we have seen actually ISIS advance has been stopped militarily, but I don't think the ideology has been stopped. 
it's like cancer which is basically now spreading all over uh, since december yes we can see that uh, militarily isis has has uh, received some setback it has it is not advancing as it was in fact some of the areas which have was under control has been taken aback but it does not mean that ideology has stopped and over the last three months what we have seen that many other countries have 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 been the target of terrorist attack so in a way actually the form has changed now we have seen many european countries been targeted similarly actually we see um, in afghanistan and pakistan there's a different kind they are not isis related isis may actually have some kind of ideological presence there but they are not present in a, in a physical form in an organizational form but it does not mean that there is no such a radical ideology exist there and the same thing when we talk about middle east what we have seen actually if you see five five this five point you will see all of them fit into middle eastern situation and same is in afghanistan afghanistan has been actually if you see uh, the uh, have seen three wars over the last um, uh, three decades first was from 80s to 90 then we have saw 90s there was a uh, there was a um, continuing civil war and then from 2001 to 2000 until now we have seen a third war is being fought there and obviously all of them had an ex have external factor involved in that so uh, uh, and uh, well actually Afghanistan and there's Pakistan being the frontline state in all three wars has bear, has borne the main brunt of that so basically uh, uh, it is not isis but basically we have also seen because of the result of this war an extremist ideology has flourished and that has taken a huge toll in the, both the countries now can uh, when we're talking about uh, fighting uh, extremism one has to clearly address those problems can without settling afghanistan's problem we cannot, we cannot actually uh, control or contain extremism in that region. Afghanistan, so, uh, there has to be some kind of solution of Afghanistan uh, conflict. Same thing is about Pakistan, when, uh, because whatever happens in Afghanistan has a direct bearing on the other side of the border. So this is basically we, our um, stability uh, of that region directly uh, linked with the situation in Afghanistan. Now, uh, the other thing is that, um, well, actually, other factor, external factor, like um, Islamic, pho Islamic phobia, that's also a very important thing. One of the, one of the major uh, um, uh, 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 objective of the ISIS is to, uh, to actually create a worldwide conflict. And I think probably, yes, and that's one of the reasons why they have started targeting the Western capitals. France, Belgium, and other countries have been hit. And, um, but basically what happened in those countries, it's like Islamic phobia, paranoia, and that has added to the, uh, to the extremism in those countries. And they have to examine actually what is the root cause of, uh, of the rising extremism in their own country. You can kill several people who are involved in those, uh, in those attacks, but it, it will not uh, end of the problem. So I think um, by, uh, Islamic phobia has helped the cause of extremist organizations like ISIS. So I'll, uh, uh, I'll just make a last comment, is that in this, kind, in this forum, I think we need to have more uh, concrete discussion about the causes uh, rather than just discussing the symptoms of that. Thank you so much.